OpenAI is reportedly building a next-gen AI music generator trained with Juilliard-level precision. A new AI browser called Dia just launched on macOS to turn your tabs into a digital copilot. Tencent unveiled a real-time 3D reconstruction model running on a single GPU. HKUST and Ant Group dropped an open-source cinematic video generator called Holocene. Crea released a true real-time AI video model, and Google expanded Earth AI with Gemini-powered reasoning to forecast global risks. AI evolved across music, browsers, 3D, film, and even the planet itself. So let's talk about it. All right, so OpenAI just fired another shot in the creator stack, and it's a big one. They're reportedly building an AI music generator that works from both text and audio prompts. So you could type something like, melancholic piano over soft rain, or upload your vocals and it'll compose full accompaniment around them in seconds. Sources say the company even partnered with students from Juilliard to annotate professional music scores for training data, teaching the model not just what notes to play, but how real musicians perform them. Phrasing, timing, dynamics, everything that gives music emotion. This isn't OpenAI's first time in the music space either. Years before ChatGPT, they experimented with a model called Jukebox that could mimic artists and blend genres. Now they're circling back, but with a far more refined approach, one that could merge seamlessly with their ecosystem of tools like ChatGPT or even Sora, where video creators could generate visuals and score them inside the same workflow. The release date's still unknown, but insiders say the project's deep in testing. Considering OpenAI's valuation just crossed $500 billion, this isn't a side experiment. They're clearly aiming to turn music generation into a core creative layer, one that could reshape how musicians, filmmakers, and even YouTubers produce original sound without ever touching a DAW. Now, a new AI browser called Dia has officially launched on macOS. Developed by the browser company, Dia is now free to download for anyone using an Apple Silicon Mac, marking the end of its limited beta. It's positioned as a lightweight, AI-driven browser designed to make everyday work faster and smarter. Dia builds an assistant directly into a familiar tabbed interface, allowing it to read the pages you have open, reason across them, and take action in real time. It can summarize long articles, compare multiple listings side by side, or help draft emails and clean up text without disrupting your workflow. The standout feature is context awareness. For example, if you have two Airbnb tabs open, Dia instantly compiles a comparison of prices, amenities, and cancellation rules. The browser also handles small automations like pulling highlights from documents, responding to customer messages, or even offering a quick voice of reason when you're about to make an impulse purchase. Because the assistant needs access to what's on your screen, Privacy is a major focus. Users get clear control over which tabs the AI can read, and sensitive sites like banking or healthcare portals are automatically protected. And the timing is interesting. Apple just started rolling out its own on-device intelligence for M-Series Macs, while competitors like Arc, Brave, and Opera have been integrating AI assistance into their browsers. But Dia's angle is different. It focuses on page-level context and real-time reasoning across multiple tabs rather than just simple chat or summaries. Right now, it is available only on M1 and newer Macs, but a Windows version is in development. With no paid tier yet, it's completely free to test, and for users juggling dozens of tabs a day, it might just be the first browser that feels like a genuine AI copilot for the web. While browsers get agents, 3D is getting a serious feed-forward engine. Tencent released Hunyan World Mirror 1.1, codenamed World Mirror, and it's a unified 3D reconstruction model that runs in real time on a single GPU. The model can take a single photo, multi-view images or even video, and spit out point clouds, multi-view depth, camera parameters, surface normals, and 3D Gaussians in one shot. If you hand it priors calibrated intrinsics camera poses or depth maps from a LiDAR or RGBD sensor, it folds those in through a multimodal prior prompting mechanism, compact tokens for camera and intrinsics, dense tokens for depth that align spatially with the visual tokens. All of that flows through a transformer backbone, then into unified decoder heads for each geometric output. There are caveats with single image inputs. You can't hallucinate what the photo doesn't show, so you'll see 
blank regions where the scene has no coverage, feed it multi-view or video, and it resolves structure far more cleanly. Tencent is shipping a demo on Hugging Face plus model weights on their org and a GitHub repo for the full pipeline. The 1.1 update pushes past 1.0's text and single image scope, and the single GPU real-time claim is the part that lands for teams who want to deploy this in production. Robotics, AR try-on, scene understanding on the edge. They're benchmarking favorably against systems like VGT on camera and point map estimation, while adding tasks VGGT didn't unify, like surface normals and 3DGS for novel view synthesis, so you can render new views without a separate nerf step. If your work tilts more towards storytelling than reconstruction, Holocene is the other headline. It's an open source long video model from HK, UST, and Ant Group that generates multi-shot narratives with consistent characters, props, and environments. And it actually understands cinematography cues, shot reverse shot, camera scale changes, deliberate dolly outs, the whole film school starter pack. The model exhibits persistent memory across shots, so a detail like an embroidered back patch stays consistent from the opening frame to the last insert. They're publishing a 14B full attention version and a 14B sparse intershot attention variant with longer L version on the way, plus 5B builds for limited memory rigs. Under the hood, it plugs into WAN 2.2's VAE and a T5 text encoder, and the team recommends Flash Attention 3 for speed. If you can't get FA3 installed, the code drops down to FA2 automatically. It'll be slower, but works. What makes Holosyn useful beyond the sizzle is the prompt format. You supply a global caption for the scene, setting, character's mood, then a sequence of per shot captions and optional cut frames that gives you directorial control without forcing you to babysit every frame. They're candid about the trade-offs. Full attention produces the highest quality, but runs heavier. The sparse intershot attention is faster with slight stability costs, and they're not shy about the comparison set. Kling and Sora 2 are the bar commercially. The claim is they're in that league for multi-shot cohesion, and because it's open source with full inference code, you can wire it into your pipeline rather than praying for a private beta invite. Now, Crea adds another angle, real-time. They open sourced Crea Real-Time, a 14B autoregressive video model distilled from WAN 2.114B using a method they call self-forcing basically converting a diffusion model into an autoregressive one that predicts frames in sequence. The headline stat is 11 frames per second on a single NVIDIA B200 with just four inference steps. So yes, it's real time, but the hardware target is not a consumer GPU. B200s run roughly thirty dollars to $40,000, so this is really aimed at studios or lab. The design includes KV cache recomputation and an attention bias trick to keep error accumulation under control during long runs, plus memory optimization specific to autoregressive video diffusion. The payoff is interaction. You can change prompts mid-generation, restyle on the fly, see a first frame in about a second, and even stream webcam or canvas primitives in for video to video editing. In other words, it's not just fast, it's responsive in a way that enables creative feedback loops you can actually use. Back to the real world, literally. Google is pushing Earth AI forward and widening access. This is the suite that's already doing flood forecasting coverage for over 2 billion people, powering crisis alerts for wildfires, cyclones, and air quality. And during the 2025 California wildfires, it pushed alerts to about 15 million people in Los Angeles while pointing to shelters in maps. The update threads Gemini's reasoning into the stack and introduces geospatial reasoning, which chains Earth AI models, weather, population density, satellite imagery, so analysts can ask compound questions and get an integrated answer. Instead of where will the storm hit, you can get which communities are most vulnerable and which roads and clinics are at risk in one pass. That same capability is bleeding into Google Earth directly. Gemini features in Earth now let analysts find objects and patterns from satellite imagery using natural language. A water utility could flag sections where a river has dried, anticipate dust storm risk in a drought, and notify communities earlier. Or analysts can zero in on harmful algae blooms to protect drinking water. The experimental feature rolls out in the United States in the coming weeks for 
Google Earth Professional and Professional Advance, with higher limits today for Google AI Pro and Ultra subscribers. On the enterprise side, Earth AI models, imagery, population, environment, are heading to Google Cloud for trusted testers, so businesses can blend their own data with Google's and get end-to-end -end workflows through Imagery Insight. The partner roster shows how broad this is getting. WHO's regional office for Africa is blending Earth AI population and environment with their own data sets to forecast cholera risk in the DRC, informing water, sanitation, and vaccination planning. Planet and Airbus are running Earth AI on top of their imagery fire hose, deforestation, mapping on historical archives for Planet, vegetation encroachment detection near power lines for Airbus to prevent outages. Bellwether at Alphabet's X is using Earth AI to enhance hurricane prediction for McGill and Partners, a global insurance broker, so claims can be paid faster and rebuilding starts sooner. The theme is consistent. Decades of geospatial modeling plus Gemini's reasoning turns into decisions you can make in minutes, not months, and Google is starting to expose the knobs first via Earth, then cloud, and eventually through trusted tester programs like geospatial reasoning. So what do you think? Will AI end up composing our music, directing our films, and even mapping our planet better than we can? Drop your thoughts below, don't forget to subscribe, and leave a like if you enjoyed this breakdown. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.